So guys, in this next news story, four young men kidnapped a teenager and held him to ransom on Snapchat in the hope of stealing up to £30,000 in cash and cryptocurrency from him. In a case which is described as gangland stuff and one of the most serious of its type, Nikhail Harris, Panash Mahachi, Dan Rico Henry and Dejon Byfield abducted the victim outside a snooker hall in Digbeth after he tried to buy nitrous oxide. They drove him to Albury where they pointed an imitation shotgun in his mouth as well as whacked him with a machete, knuckle dusters and their fists as they threatened to kill him. During the two hour ordeal, they sent videos to his friends demanding money but soon realised he did not have the five figure sums they were initially led to believe. They just ended up stealing £377 in cash and forced him to transfer more than £800 worth of cryptocurrency before they dropped him off at a railway station. The four men who had never previously been convicted of a crime were jailed for nearly 40 years in total at Birmingham Crown Court today, so I'll go through that in a moment. Judge Simon Drew Casey described it as a truly shocking and terrifying incident, adding, this is one of the most serious kidnapping incidents that I have seen come before these courts. So the victim had been at Snow Hill Snooker Centre in Digbeth on September 2nd last year when he contacted Harris, who he knew as Ziggs, to buy laughing gas. Harris arrived outside the venue around 7 o'clock in a Volkswagen driven by Byfield. The prosecutor Nigel Stelling said, as he approached a man called Fresco, which is Mr. Mahichi, he hit him over the head. This caused him to lose consciousness and he was pulled into the vehicle. The inference is that was Mr. Harris who pulled him inside. He had taken a seat in the rear and when he regained consciousness, he found himself sat in the rear in the middle with Mr. Harris and Mr. Mahichi either side. Mr. Byfield was the driver, Mr. Henry was the front seat passenger. He told the court when they got to Albury, the victim handed over his phone trainers and £377 in cash after being threatened by a fake sawn off shotgun held by Henry and a machete held by Byfield. The prosecutor added he was also forced to convert cryptocurrency into money. That took quite some time, causing a degree of frustration among his attackers, and he was repeatedly asked if he wanted to die. The prosecutor detailed the various methods of coercion including being hit with a smart whip metal canister used to hold nitrous oxide as well as being told he would not make it to bed tonight. The prosecutor considered the defendants made video recordings in the car which they posted on his Snapchat. They showed the shotgun being held by Mr Henry and the complainant being pushed around generally. The videos were then sent to his group chats. The five defendants used Snapchat to demand ransom money for five bags or £5,000 from his friends. Before the offence, Mr Harris said they could expect to obtain £30,000 from him and when it became apparent no such payments were going to be coming, the others became upset with Mr Harris who apologised. The victim was eventually dropped off at Sandwell and Dudley Railway Station at around 9 or 10 o'clock by which time one of his friends had called the police. All four defendants admitted kidnap, robbery, having an imitation firearm with intent and threatening someone with a bladed article. Byfield also pleaded guilty to possession of cannabis with intent to supply. So Harris, who's aged 20, was sentenced to 10 years. Houston Roberts, defending, conceded the case was gangland stuff and he said, I asked him why. He said, I don't know. It was a moment of madness. There is a genuine contrition, understanding and realisation of the terror that must have been felt by the young man. Mahichi, who's from Albury, who's 20 years old, received nine years and six months. His solicitor mitigated for him told the court he was from an excellent family who were shattered by his actions. He added there was no great planning because no one knew the victim would be calling one of them seeking nitrous oxide. He said there was a rush, asking friends to help young men being buoyed up by their own stupidity, supporting each other and not having the courage and maturity to say what are we doing. This is ridiculous. It was going with the crowd. Byfield is 20, he was sentenced to 10 years while Henry was sentenced to 8 years and 6 months. Joseph Keating was representing both of them said they both talk about lack of maturity. It's a real shame because the character references paint two individuals who are very different in nature, have positivity in their outlook, have positive contributions to their families and society and had a bright future ahead both of them. Yes, both have reiterated how sorry they are to the victim and their families and the families are mortified, very upset and scared about the impact this is going to have upon them. The judge in passing sentence said, The starting point isn't about any of the four of you, it's about the victim. 
He was the person who was kidnapped in the street. He was the person who was hit on the head, knocked unconscious and come to the back of the car. He was the one who was threatened and assaulted in the car. Not merely verbal threats, but threatened with a machete and a sawn-off shotgun. He didn't know it didn't work. All of you told him, you were going to kill him. No doubt, he had every reason to believe that this was true. I do not want to think about this. That could have been one of your friends or your brother or your cousin. And this is absolutely no question this was a truly shocking and terrifying incident. However, he also acknowledged the case was tragic for each of the defendants and he confirmed that he had reduced the terms of imprisonment slightly after considering sentencing guidelines for young adults. And in this next news story, a talented footballer who was once on the books of Swansea City turned to dealing heroin and cocaine because too proud to receive benefits. He was caught after police saw him engaged in a drug deal in a children's park. Kauso Dorama, who is 24, was pursued by police in Cardiff at around half five in the evening on June the 16th when he tried to flee on his bike but was discovered hiding underneath the car. He was later found in possession of up to £1,000 worth of heroin and cocaine. At a sentencing hearing at Newport Crown Court, police told that they were on a proactive patrol in Adamsdown when they saw two men approach another group of three men sat on a bench in Cemetery Park. They suspected a drug deal was taking place and approached the two groups which caused them to scatter. The prosecutor Stephen Donahue said Dorame attempted to leave the park on his bike but later abandoned it and ran into Howard Gardens but he was detained. He was searched and found in possession of £95 in cash and a black Nokia phone but no drugs were discovered. A short time later, a member of the public approached the office and told them that they had seen a defendant throw something into a bush. A quick search resulted in a vape box being discovered and found to contain six wraps of cocaine and 13 wraps of heroin. When Dorame's home was searched, further drugs were found including three grams of heroin powder and seven wraps of uh, heroin. There was a total of eight grams of heroin and one gram of cocaine found with a street value of around £700. Dorame later pleaded guilty to two counts of possession with intent to supply Class A drugs and the court heard he had a previous conditional discharge for possession of cannabis but had no previous convictions for offences relating to Class A drugs. In mitigation, his defence barrister, Martha Smith Higgins, said her client was signed to Swansea as a teenager after being provided with a scholarship and sponsorship. But by the age of 19, he was released from his contract and was unable to get connections with other clubs. As a result, Dorami's life was set to spiral out of control and he turned to using drugs and he ended up racking up a debt and began dealing drugs in order to pay off that debt. Since his remand in custody, the defendant has joined the prison football team and if he was to receive a non-custodial sentence, he's been offered a contract with a football club in Port Talbot. He also said that he has an 11-month child whom he wished to return to. However, the sentencing recorder, Paul Lewis KC, said, You told the probation officer you were living off the proceeds of crime because you were too proud to claim benefits, so I'm going to sentence you to 28 months imprisonment. So guys, these are a couple of stories coming out from the streets of the UK. It's your boy GC. Keep it locked. Keep it real.